This morning, I invite you to consider the sermon topic on this first Sunday of Advent, when you least expect it, when you least expect it. This is the time and season of the year that many people take the time and begin to prepare their homes for the holidays. The holidays when we are inviting family and friends to come over. It's the time where we begin to share traditions, holiday parties, or even just social gatherings to be festive and bring joy to our lives. It's the time that we host people and we get our houses in order. And many of us, or most of us, or pretty much all of us prefer to know when someone is on their way. We want to make sure that we know when someone is coming because we want to make sure that every element of our house is in order. We want to make sure um, for some of us, only for some of us, we want to get the clothes up off the floor. And if they're off the floor, if haven't been washed, or if they have been washed, we want to get them folded and out of the basket. We want to make sure that our houses are ready and presentable for the one who is coming. And so that means that it is imperative that someone schedules a time with us when they plan to arrive, that they schedule a day with us when they plan to arrive. However, the reality is sometimes in life, life leaves us in a predicament where we have gotten so busy with everything going on around us that we find ourselves unprepared for our guests who are coming. It was interesting to read as we begin our Advent study on today, as we begin reading um, N.T. Wright's book, um, the opening introduction for this week's Advent focus, which which is watch. The author N.T. Wright describes a time that there were 30 or so planned, hear this, planned visitors who showed up at their front door. Now what is interesting about this story is that when the 30 or so planned visitors showed up, the, the people in the house were not ready. They, they had scheduled a time with the homeowners, uh, the historic homeowners association. They knew that they were supposed to come, but in the busyness of it all, they forgot that that they were actually coming on that day. So the doorbell rings and their house was not in order. The doorbell rings and this family was scrambling and so they sent the association with uh, in the back garden while they sent the children to pick up things and I can only imagine there were toys in the floor and clothes everywhere and they took about five or so minutes to try to put the house in order. And when reading that, um, the, the, they concluded this story with the reality um, that when the Son of Man is really coming back, you may not have five minutes to get yourself together. You may not have two minutes. You may not have three minutes to get yourselves together. And as I began to read um, this particular story, I realized that when the Son of Man is coming back, he will appear when you least expect it. And so um, we all want to be ready when the guest of honor arrives at our home. We want to be ready that we live a life that when the guests schedule in advance, that we can be prepared for the moment that the doorbell rings. But the reality is in the text that we're looking at in Matthew chapter 24, ver verses 36 to 44, this particular passage suggests that no one will know the day, the hour, or the time that the Son of Man will appear. Um, the, the author suggest in Matthew chapter 24 verses 36 through 44 that we won't know when the Son of Man will come. We will not know um, the moment that Jesus decides that I'm coming back again for the earth. And so in the midst of not knowing, what is so interesting to me, I hear this all the time. I, I'm an avid social media person and in TikTok everybody is predicting that tomorrow is the day that Jesus is coming because there's destruction in the land. They're depicting that in the next week the time is come because um, there's a fire over here. There's an unexplainable reason um, that, that there's an unexplainable thing happening in the earth and climate changes. This must be the time that Jesus is coming. But the reality is the text, the text in Matthew and not just Matthew and other verses is that no one knows when Jesus is coming. But the, what the text here is suggesting is not to look at the doom and gloom that is surrounding us, not to look at the destruction and the despair, but to get ready because when Jesus comes, when Jesus comes, it's not so that I, I get excited now that I read this text because as I begin to study this text, and, and I grew up Baptist, for those who don't know me, 
Um, I, I'm Methodist now. I'm good in Methodist. I'm ready. Um, but I grew up Baptist. Uh, Diane, I'm going to talk to you. You was in a Baptist church. And, and, and when I grew up Baptist, there were these sermons called Fire and Brimstone. And they focused on going to hell. They focused on getting your life prepared for um, so that you don't end up here. But when I read, and this text was used for that parameter. But what this text is suggesting is not to get prepared, not to be the ones to make it with God. This text of Get your house in order now so that you can be with God. This is a text of hope. This is a text to be ready when Jesus is coming. This is a text to be alert and live in faithfulness. This is a text that suggests that we should be working on our relationship with Christ. And all we have to do is watch. All we have to do is wait in anticipation of the coming of Jesus Christ. But then I love Christ because Christ knows there's people like me that don't get the first line. And so the text then begins to talk about and gives the analogy that in the days of Noah that the people um, were not prepared for the flood. I like that part of the text because I can only imagine if I saw Noah, if I was one of those people and it's not raining and there's this gigantic ark being built. I would wonder, what in the world is he building this ark for? Why is he building the ark? Now, I'm one of those people that I'm also nosy and want to be prepared. So I would have went to Noah, and I would have said, Noah, is there a reason that you're building the ark? And Noah would have said, because a flood is coming. And then if I asked the question, I would have been prepared. I wouldn't have been like the people who were standing there going about everyday life thinking, I got time. I don't need to worry about what's happening before me. I got time. I can go on with my life as usual. But this text is telling us, be alert and be on watch. What is happening around you? Are you ready to see Jesus when he comes? If the doorbell rang today, are you ready to let the guest in? And so, for many of us, we need multiple examples. And for the longest in that growing up stage of fire and brimstone, uh, the next part of this and many times when we look at scriptures like this, people's tendency is to want to predict what's going to happen. People's tendency is want to tell someone else where they will end up. But the reality that this text focuses on where will you end up? This text focuses on what are you going to do to be ready when Jesus comes? This text focuses on living with the understanding of who Christ is and how we offer Christ the world. This text helps us understand that when we expect least expect it. We should be working on building our relationship and being an intentional follower of Jesus Christ. This text focuses us on making sure that we see the signs of when Christ is present before us. This text suggests that it is imperative for us to keep watch and be alert. Now, I can imagine that this text doesn't feel good because it talks about the end times it talks about that the fact that Jesus will come again um, but what makes this text feel good to me is that what Jesus is doing in this moment in this Advent season is saying when you least expect it I'm coming so be ready for when the doorbell rings but in, in order to be ready for the doorbell ring in order to be ready to meet Jesus in order to be able to see when Jesus come you first got to know who Jesus is you got to know who's coming to ring the bell, who's coming for you, and what is he coming to do. I love the particular passage um, in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7, as I was preparing for today, and I was like, God, how do these two scriptures compare to each other? How is these two scriptures um, have anything um, to do with it? But Isaiah 9, 1 through 7 is the proclamation um, and the prophetic order that Jesus is coming. <laughs> it is the proclamation and a prophetic order that there will be a child born unto us. It's a prophetic proclamation that there is going to be one that comes for the distressed. There is one who's coming for destruction. There is one who is coming for those who are in pain and suffering. And all we have to do is wait for um, Jesus. All we have to do when you least expect it. He's going to show up in our distressed places. There is hope this morning and watching and waiting for the appearance of Christ. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1 through 7. 
I said in the first service, and I'll say it again, uh, the, the reality is I come from the South. Um, I was raised by my mother and my grandmother, um, and, and they were the cleanest people I know. Um, I, I had to get up in the morning. I don't do it now. I'm just going to confess my sins before the church. <laughs> we would get up early in the morning, and before we would go eat breakfast, the first thing we had to do is we had to make the bed. And my grandmother was precise. You had to fold. I'm going to talk to the saints over here. They, 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 you had to fold the corners and tuck them in and everything has to be pristine. And after you do that every morning, that every single day, Pastor Jen, we had to clean up the house. We had to pick up everything because my grandmother would always say, you never know who's going to stop by. Um, and so now here we are headed into Christmas and I find myself doing those things because my mother is coming. And because I know who my mother is and because I know that my mother is coming, if that house is not in order, she's going to ask me some questions. I'm going to feel some kind of way because she I know who she is I, I know why she's coming I know she's coming to see me I know she's coming to spend time with me I know she's coming to make sure that everything is all right and what this text says to me this morning that when you least expect it Jesus is going to show up and the reality is are you ready when he comes but you need to know who he is to recognize when he gets here. Uh, this text lets me know uh, that in the midst of distress and destruction, the prophetic message says there is one who is coming. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, the greatness of his government, and the peace will be on, will be no end. What are you saying, Pastor Tammy, that in order for you to be ready when it comes, you've got to first know who he is and when you know who he is then you don't have to worry and predict what's happening in the world around you because you serve the wonderful counselor the one who can counsel himself the one who can give you advice when no one else is around the one who can comfort you in the midst of a storm the one who will show up when you least expect it the one who is the mighty God the one who takes on the power power of the Father and becomes God the Son, the one who is mighty in battle, the one who will fight before you, the everlasting Father, the one who is there to provide, protect, and handle everything you stand in need of. He is the Prince of Peace, the one who is giving wholeness, the one who is coming so that we will live forever. This is who's coming. This is who we're watching for. This is who we're waiting for. The one who will be born in Bethlehem. The one who is coming so that we can have life and life everlasting. And he's coming when you least expect him. The hope in this message this morning is not the focus on where you will end up. It's the focus on how you will end up. I'm grateful for my early beginnings of fire and brimstone. I, I am. It taught me to fear God. Be very clear. But this is a text of hope and love that tells me who's coming for me and who loves me. This Advent season, do you know who's coming? And are you prepared and ready to receive the one who is coming? We live in a time, I, I just stopped watching the news, not because I don't wanna be informed, because I want to inform my spirit spiritually in this season. So instead of watching the news, I'm praying and opening my Bible because whatever the world predicts, I know the one who's coming who has a greater prediction. And so while there may be inflation going on and there, there, there may be destruction in the land, the one who is coming is a way maker. The one who is coming provides miracle. 
And I'm standing in this season of Advent saying, I'm waiting and watching for him to show up in the midst of all of this when we least expect him. I invite you today that as the praise team comes and we move into a space of communion, as we move into communion, this table represents why he came. This table represents the body and the blood of Christ that was shed on Calvary's cross so that you and I can be ready when it comes. This table represents the sacrifice of the one who hung on the cross, who bled, suffered, and died, and rose again so that we can have a place to be with him when he comes. And so as we come to the communion table, I want you to begin over this Advent and ask yourself, are we ready? Are we alert? Are we vigilant? Are we prepared for the second coming of Christ? Because when we are ready, we welcome a Christ who's coming again, who will give us a life better than we've ever seen before here on earth. I invite you this Advent to journey through the text and to know this Christ who died so that we can be one with Christ. He has done great things for me. He has done great things. Hallelujah. He has done great things. Bless his Join us, oh my soul, and all that is within me, blessed is soul. 